there guys, Portalmaster9351 here, and in today's video, we are going to be continuing our breakdown of Skylanders Academy Season 2. Now, today's video is going to be talking about episodes 4, 5, 6, and 7. So, the um, basically the idea of the first video covering the first three episodes, this video will be covering the next four episodes. The next video should cover 8, 9, 10, and 11, and then the last video will cover... Um, 12 and 13 wrapping up the season so um i have only watched two episode um seven i think i should probably make that clear you know as of right now i'm only to episode seven so i don't know what comes after just wanted to throw that out there um but without further ado let's get started with the breakdown of episodes four through seven So the first episode, of course, that we're going to be covering is episode four. Why would we cover episode five before we talked about episode four? I don't know why that would be. Anyways, it's called Thanks Taking for the Memories. And so basically the episode opens up with the Skylanders, you know, gathered around and Eon is saying, well, it's Thanks Taking. So that means that you all get to take a break since evil is taking a break. And it's revealed that Thanks Taking is when the villains give thanks for everything that they've stolen um, throughout the years. So it's basically a Thanksgiving episode, if you will. It's kind of the closest thing to it, really. And, you know, they're like, I'm thankful for taking this. I'm thankful for taking this. But but anyways, because they're all celebrating that, these Skylanders can take a break. So all the Skylanders and Eon go off to a respective place, except Spyro. Spyro has no family, and neither does Stealth Elf. So Stealth Elf is going to stay at the Academy, while Spyro wants to go home with Pop Fizz or Eruptor or literally anyone, but because of issues in the past, he can't go home with them, and Eon does not want Spyro to go with him um, because he's got to be alone. So he's stuck there with Stealth Elf and and basically, they've kind of got to make do. Well, Stealth Elf isn't terribly happy about this, though, because Stealth Elf was hoping to train for some super ninja secrety skills stuff, basically, and she doesn't want Spyro to interrupt it, and she's kind of concerned that Spyro's going to cut into that time a little bit. Anyways, um, Spyro is able to convince Stealth Elf to take a little bit of time off from her training, and they go and they do all kinds of fun things around the Academy, and of course, a montage ensues. Well, at the end of the montage, it cuts over to the Doom Raiders, and they're in the little diner that we've seen them in repeatedly. I think we've seen them in this diner before. This diner is sort of a recurring location. We keep seeing them there, and they've invited this little Mabu couple that's like in an abusive relationship. It's kind of funny in a really kind of messed up sort of way, but basically, um, they invite this Mabu couple, and they're going to eat the Mabu, is, is sort of what it's implied. And it's just them cooking the food, and it's taking Chef Pepper Jack forever, and Chaos offers to help, and stuff. That's not terribly important to the overall story, but basically, the, the main point is the Doom Raiders are eating their little Thanksgiving dinner, preparing it, what have you. Anyway, it cuts back to the Skylanders, back the Academy, which is, of course, just Spyro and Stealth Elf, and basically, after their montage, you know, Stealth Elf just kind of wants to get back to her training, but Spyro is like, look, Stealth Elf, there's this super awesome ninja sword in the vault, in the secret Academy vault. Why don't we go break into it? And so, they go, and they try to break into the vault, but they can't because they need Eon's beard. So, Stealth Elf goes and does her little teleportation thingy to collect a whole bunch of hairs, uh, beard hair, of eons just scattered around the academy. And basically, she fashions herself a fake beard, and they're able to get into the vault. But when they get into the vault, uh, one of the beard hairs um, slips off of Stealth Elf's face, and Spyro inhales it and sneezes fire, burning the beard to a crisp, and that causes them to get stuck in in the vault with no way out. So it goes to alert Eon, which, you know, normally he would receive a message and would be able to manually override it, but apparently he's off meditating and is not paying attention to his phone or whatever device he has at all, so the Skylanders are stuck in the vault. So that's it's not good for him. It's, it's not good. 
The Doom Raiders, they start to eat dinner back at the diner. Dinner at the diner makes sense. Um, Spyro is, I mean, not Spyro, Chaos has, of course, prepared his dish that he prepares every year for his mom and Glumshanks and says, here, look, you know, enjoy this. Um, so they start serving out the food. We see more of the Mabu couple yelling at each other, but really um, just sort of cuts back there, sort of in a break between the Skylanders and, um, you know, the Doom Raiders. Because, of course, it follows both of them throughout the series and it just sort of cuts back and forth. But anyways, it cuts back to the Skylanders. Um, I don't know why I keep saying Skylanders because it's really only Spyro and Stealth Elf in this particular episode. But anyways, they're in the vault and they're trying to get out and they're like being hostile and stuff. And the room is like, okay, well, time to self-destruct. And they're like, oh crap, we gotta get out of here. But it's, it's really not that easy to get out and they find that they're they're pretty much stuck there. So they're um, just kind of looking around, but they haven't really found anything too interesting just quite yet. So it cuts back to the diner, and of course, it's be every all the food is being served now. They're actually getting to eat their Thanksgiving dinner, and Chaos serves his dish, and it's absolutely terrible. Turns out that Chaos, uh, I mean, sorry, that Chaos's mom and Glumshanks have been humoring him this entire time, and his Thanksgiving dish is absolutely terrible. And speaking of Chaos's mom and Glumshanks, it cuts back to the two of them at their Thanksgiving feast back at her castle and they're a little glum they're quite sad considering that chaos is not there and so there's not really too much importance there but the idea is kind of you know that chaos is sort of missing um his mom and glumshanks and chaos and um chaos's mom and glumshanks are missing chaos so everyone's kind of missing each other just because it's not normal and the doom raiders are not that happy because chaos's dish is well it's it's terrible, to be perfectly honest with you. It cuts back to Spyro and Stealth Elf in the vault, and it is revealed that Spyro has found a book on dragon ancestry, but the page that should contain information on his kind is torn out, almost as if someone has hidden it from him. So, you know, there's not too much information, you know, about who actually, you know, got rid of it or what else is in the book, but the main important part is that they have removed the information about Spyro's race. And that's kind of interesting because it's it's a little bit of foreshadowing, I think, for what is to come. Even though I don't really know what's to come, it's just kind of interesting that someone is hiding all this information from him. It's, it's kind of a little juicy there. Anyways, Spyro and Stealth Elf are kind of like, well, I guess it's just time to, you know admit that we're never getting out of here and they kind of apologize to each other like look Spyro's kind of like look I'm really sorry that I ruined this for you and got us trapped in here just because I wanted to do something fun I, I really am sorry and they get kind of all emotional and stuff the security robot at that point is like I understand emotion now and I understand all these you know things that I basically the robot gains emotion becomes a sentient little robot thingy and they're like Please, can you not blow us up? And, well, the vault opens up because apparently the password to get out the whole time has just been saying please because Hugo is the one who plant, who programmed the robot. So it's kind of a little interesting thing. Um, apparently Hugo is very proficient with programming robots. I don't know. Kind of interesting. Um, and Spyro finally shows Stealth the, the sword that he brought her to sh that he brought her in to show her at the very beginning, and is kind of she plays with it for a little bit, but then you know puts it back down, saying, ah, "I prefer my blades personally. I like them better." And they they walk out of the vault, and all is good. Then it cuts back to the Doom Raiders, and you know, um, Wolfgang kind of is like after the feast is ruined because not only is Chaos's dish Chaos's dish terrible but also the thanks taking sheep has escaped and the mabu have run off that they were going to eat and it's all it's all gone you know to chaos basically and wolfgang is like really though the fact that chaos took thanks taking away from us is like the ultimate thanks taking thing and he should be thankful for th taking the thanks taking away from us some crap like that he goes all philosophical and it pretty much ends there it's not a terribly important episode other than uh, Spyro finding the book in that vault. So that's 
about it. Um, anyways, it cuts back to the, um, the vault, and Eon and the other Skylanders have actually returned from their vacation at the end of Thanks Taking, and, K and Eon looks and realizes that the vault has been broken into, he did get an alert, and he confronts Spyro and Stealth them about it, and it's like, have you found anything in there of particular interest? And they basically say, no, we didn't find anything particularly interesting, basically blatantly lying to Eon. He's trying to figure out if Spyro found that book. And, you know, Spyro did not, did find the book, but does not tell Eon that that happens. And Eon's kind of like, well, we got to do something about this to make sure that, you know, nobody finds out about these things. It's ending. Almost all the episodes are ending like that. Like, like, you know, Eon is like, let's make sure that he doesn't find out about this stuff. Eon is trying to hide crap from Spyro. The question is, what is he trying to hide? The next episode, episode 5, Elementary, My Dear Eruptor, is another episode that's kind of like a little bit of a filler episode. There's nothing terribly important within this episode. We get our first introduction to Sprocket, but in all honesty, not a lot of importance happens in the episode. Nonetheless, I'll still do a basic plot synopsis of the episode. The episode opens up with Hugo having to grade a gigantic stack of midterms, and he's basically like, that's a lot of midterms. The Skylanders are like, that's a lot of midterms. That's going to take you forever to grade. And he's like, that would be with the old grading machine. But luckily, we have this new grading machine right over here. And it was invented by Sprocket. And we get our first little introduction to Sprocket right then and there. And basically, we get a rundown of her powers and how she's basically a giant tech nerd, if you will. So it's revealed that the way that they tested the accuracy of this new grading machine was by running the old you know, midterms through this thing to make sure that everything was correct. And it turns out that the old grading machine did not work correctly at all. And there's one grading machine, or one grade, uh, ugh, I can't talk. The grades were not processed correctly. And so there's one test that broke all the records for the entrance exams for um, the Skylanders. And it turns out that uh, Eruptors is the one that broke that record. And everyone is kind of like, huh? Eruptors pretty well, stupid, if you will. He's not not the not the brightest rock in the volcano. So how did he get this record? How did he get this really, you know, top of the line score? And so they do a little bit of investigating. While they're trying to figure out what makes him so smart, they invite him to lecture at the Skylands Community College, but well, he doesn't really know what to say. Chaos, back at the Doom Raiders base camp in the Falling Forest, is like, Yo, Golden Queen, I need an assistant. I'm so much better when I have an assistant. And he's like, any volunteers? And well, no one volunteers except Broccoli Guy. And so he, he gets stuck with Broccoli Guy and has to deal with his annoying characteristics, personality, voice, with basically everything about Broccoli Guy. Cuts back to the Skylanders, and it turns out that Eruptor is a great detective. If you've ever seen the Sherlock Holmes series that aired on PBS, um, that had, um, uh, what's his face? The guy who plays Doctor Strange. You can't think of who is, what is actual, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. If you've ever seen the Sherlock Holmes series with Benedict Cumberbatch in it, Eruptor has a very similar power, uh, as portrayed by Sherlock Holmes, Benedict Cumberbatch in that series. He can basically freeze the room and just look at all of the evidence around him, and he can solve just about any crime. But the thing is, it gives him a splitting headache. And this is something that he thought was a common thing that everyone could do. But apparently, he's just been suppressing this for a while because it gives him such bad headaches. But that is determined to be the reason why he is so brilliant. He's a, a wonderful detective. So, to solve the problem of him having to, you know, get those headaches whenever he uses this power, Sprocket basically fashions these little lenses that allow him to focus in on things without giving him a splitting headache. Later on in the episode, Chaos is sort of walking around and he gets injured. I can't exactly remember how he gets injured. I just have it here written in my notes that Chaos gets injured and Broccoli Guy heals him. So I guess that it's not terribly important what actually hurt him. But anyways, it's revealed that Broccoli Guy's powers are actually transferable. He can actually transfer his healing powers, but to do so, he needs to get 
um, a, a power from eight of the elements, from the eight elements around Skylands. So once it's revealed that Broccoli Guy needs to suck the essence out of various things, the first thing he does is he goes to an island full of, of sheep and he just sucks the earth element straight out of the island, killing all of the grass there. And the Skylanders go and they investigate it and they can't really figure out exactly what happened. They know that the life was basically sucked right out of the grass, but they can't figure out who is responsible. Later on, though, the um, Broccoli Guy and Chaos go off and find a swamp that Snapshot is at, and they basically zap Snapshot and suck the water right out of the swamp. They drain the swamp, and they get the water element from that. So then it is revealed that basically what... Broccoli Guy and the Dune Raiders are trying to do is they're trying to get close to Chaos to figure out where Chaosandra's castle is so that they can go and basically get the revenge on Chaosandra because she you know, bested Golden Queen. Well, it's revealed that Chaos does not actually know where the castle is. Only Glumshanks does. So they go and they try to track down Glumshanks um, after they drain that the water out of the swamp that Snapshot is at. Anyways, the Skylanders go to the swamp and they see that Snapshot has been injured and they're basically like, what happened? Well, Eruptor is with them and because he's a super duper awesome detective, he's able to track down and figure out that it is Chaos and he tries to figure out where they they actually went and so he goes off on his own and he gets really arrogant about being able to handle this all on his own and the other Skylanders are not terribly happy about that. So then it cuts back to Broccoli Guy and Chaos, and they are able to find Glumshanks outside of the Skylands Community College. And basically, they're trying to get the information out of Glumshanks. They start sucking the life essence out of Glumshanks, since he is a troll and has healing properties and such, which apparently trolls have healing properties. Fun fact of the day for Skylanders. So yeah, they suck the essence out of it, and they almost are able to do that, except Eruptor sort of busts in there, and Broccoli Guy's like, oh, okay, I'll just get the fire essence from Eruptor. So they start to do that, and Eruptor fires flares off into the air and alerts the Skylanders. The Skylanders go, and they're able to bust Eruptor out. They're basically able to rescue him from trouble, and they're able to beat Broccoli Guy um, and prevent him from being able to re wreak any more havoc on Skylands. So Eruptor then basically goes, and he apologizes to everyone for being arrogant, and basically Chaos and Broccoli Guy sort of do a little mini team up to try to get back at Chaos. Chaosandra, I mean not Chaosandra, Golden Queen for trying to use Chaos to get to Chaosandra. So um, basically they, Chaos is like, here listen, you team up with me and I'll keep it a secret that you ever went on this power trip. Because um, he shrinks back down and goes back to his normal self. So all is right with the world, Chaos and Broccoli Guy are together, and now all of the Skylanders is sort of made up for, you know, Eruptor's arrogance, and that's pretty much where the episode ends. As I said, there's not too much important stuff revealed in this episode, other than the fact that Golden Queen is trying to get back at Chaosandra. Alright, the next episode that is in the series is, of course, episode 6, which is Split Decision. This episode opens up with a montage of Hex and Skull training because, of course, they're still cadets after they failed the entrance exam the last time. Skull effectively embarrasses Hex in class. Apparently, Skull is sort of like this guy who just kind of goes off on his own, wants to do his own thing, and is sort of tired of Hex bossing him around, and he wants to make his own decisions. So just in the first few moments of this episode, you can already sort of see the split, the rift in their relationship, and you can kind of tell that this is going to focus a lot on the relationship between Skull and Hex. So Chaos is sort of sneaking around the base camp, and he wakes everyone up, and it's revealed that apparently Golden Queen is planning a party for Chaos, but it's not just a normal party. It's a roast, and for those of you that don't know what a roast is, it's basically when someone agrees to go and sit on a pedestal and basically be made fun of for an entire night by people roasting them. And so, the, the goal is to make Chaos angry and find out how strong he actually is when he loses his cool. And so, apparently, when Chaos gets stronger, his mom gets weaker. So I guess sort of as the power, the person that the power is passed on to as they get stronger, it takes away the power from the person who gave it to him. So basically, they want to find out how weak Chaosandra is by figuring out how strong Chaos is 
And the best way to figure that out is by making Chaos angry by roasting him for an entire night. Apparently Glumshanks is going to be the one who's going to roast Chaos, but Chaos is not going to know that it is Glumshanks that gets to roast him all night. It cuts back to the Skylanders, specifically Hex and Skull, and while Hex and Skull are trying to sort of solidify their bond, it's not really going well. And Skull finds out about a spell that will free him from Hex's control. So he goes and he does this incantation, and the orb that is around him disappears, and he basically becomes a freely operating thing, but... Hex goes, her eyes go dark, and she just floats off and kind of goes away, and it's kind of apparent that, well, Hex is starting to lose it a little bit now that the bond between them has been broken. After their little, that little scene, it cuts to the undead club meeting, which apparently meets after school, and it's composed of Hex, Cinder, and Roller Brawl. And so, Hex and, or, sorry, Cinder and Roller Brawl are sort of like, I wonder where Hex is. She's almost never late to a meeting. And Hex floats down, and basically, they get a group hug, and by hugging, he, Hex is able to transfer this dark power to Cinder and Roller Brawl. Their eyes go dark, too, and they sort of zombify, too and start spreading the thing as well. It's sort of like a zombie virus is, is really the best way to look at it. It cuts back to the Doom Raiders and Chaos's roast and Chaos's roast begins. He's starting to get roasted. Uh, introductions are made and well, he gets roasted pretty hard. <laughs> Hex's skull cuts back to him, uh, goes over to Eon, is basically like, look at me, I'm free of Hex. And Eon's kind of like, you're what? And he's like, I'm free! I'm free from Hex! And Eon's like, what are you doing? Are you insane? You've made Hex go crazy. Her dark powers are gonna take control of her. This is not good. Not good at all. And Skull's kind of like, well, I, I didn't notice anything bad about Hex. And well, it turns out that Hex has corrupted every single person, Skylander, at the Academy, except the core group of Skylanders, you know, Jetvac, Popthis, Spyro, Eruptor, and Stealth Up. They're the only ones that have not been corrupted. And so, it is revealed that the only way to stop this curse is for Skull to make up to Hex and basically rebind himself with Hex. That's, that's the only way to stop this. So, after that little scene, it cuts over to Hugo. He walks out, he gets corrupted, Corrupted, he corrupts Pop Fizz, and so then the only ones that are not corrupted are the, well, the, the core group minus Pop Fizz. After Pop Fizz gets corrupted, everybody else except Spyro gets corrupted because Spyro is actually able to fly. And Spyro goes to Eon and um, they, he basically gets filled in on what is going on and it is agreed on that the darkness has effectively taken over Hex and something has got to happen. It then cuts back to the roast where Chaos is getting roasted and as predicted, he completely loses it, loses it and he just goes absolutely berserk and so golden queen tries to stop chaos on his little crazy little power trip and he tries to turn or and she tries to turn him into gold it does not work and the only other person who is resistant to golden queen's golden powers is chaos sandra so it's revealed that chaos is at least as strong as his mother if not stronger and so that means that chaos sandra is definitely getting weaker than she used to be it cuts back to spyro and the skull and Spyro picks up Hex's skull and flies him over to where Hex is and drops him in. The skull recites an incantation and the bond between them is made up and Skull gets his orb back and everyone is decorrupted basically. So it ends there. The only interesting thing to come out of this episode is that uh, Chaos is stronger than his mother. It's like one interesting thing is revealed per episode, and I'm pretty sure in the last couple of episodes there's going to be a lot of things going on. But yeah, basically, not a lot going on in this episode. The main thing to take away from this is Hex and Skull have an unbreakable bond. If it's broken, Hex goes crazy. Um, basically, Chaos is stronger than his mother and can't be turned to gold by Golden Queen. It's episode six for you. The final episode that we're going to be talking about today is episode 7, The People vs. Pop Fizz.
The episode opens up with the gang eating breakfast, and Pop Fizz drops little drops of his potions on all of their breakfasts, and specifically drops it on Jetvac's muffin, even though Jetvac does not want Pop Fizz to do that, and it makes his little bird seed muffin jump all over the place and break a window. And so Pop Fizz drops a few of his beakers, leaving breakfast, and that's it's pretty much how the episode opens up. It's a pretty simple little opening with not a lot of important details, except for the fact that Pop Fizz drops some of his beakers. We cut over to Glumshanks at the Skylands Community College, and he's discussing philosophy with a fellow student, talking about Descartes and all that fun stuff. Anyways, Chaos approaches Glumshanks and asks him for a favor. Luckily, Kaboom is there and chases Chaos away from Glumshanks and is able to keep Glumshanks safe, at least for the time being. There's a team meeting this day for the Skylanders, and so Pop Fizz shows up to the team meeting and is like, wow, I must be here early. I'm the only one here. And Eon's like, dude, you're an hour late. And he's like, eh. So apparently the Skylanders are all fighting fisticuffs, and we actually get a brief little appearance of fisticuffs. And so he goes over to fisticuffs, and like basically he ruins the fight, and, and fisticuffs is able to win the fight because when Pop Fizz burst into the fight, he throws everyone off, and they, they just get, you know, beaten by fisticuffs. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's revealed that someone has robbed a Skylands bank, and it's assumed that whoever robbed it is Pop Fizz, because in the room where the money is kept, some of Pop Fizz's beakers are found, and they have his hair on them. So it definitely appears that Pop Fizz could have been the person to have robbed the bank. But what they don't understand is like, how is that possible? Pop Fizz doesn't really remember what he was doing though, because he has a terrible memory. So there's no way to really prove whether he did it or not. And that presents us with some interesting issues. So because everyone thinks it is um, Pop Fizz who robbed the bank, um, uh, Eon calls Hugo, who is currently teaching a class that Glumshanks is in. And Hugo says, okay, I have to leave to go represent Pop Fizz in court. But, Glumshanks, you can teach the class. He's like, you you seem like you're passionate about education, and if the class gets too restless, show a movie, but, well, you know, I'll let you teach for now. So, as Glumshanks is trying to teach this class, Chaos sneaks into the class and basically starts being incredibly disruptive and makes life really, really hard for Glumshanks as a teacher. And so, this leads to him eventually just having to say, you know what? Fine, I'll just show a movie in class if that's really what I have to do. And again, the situation just continues to further devolve into chaos. And Glumshanks does not realize that chaos is the person in class causing all this disruption, even though he only has sunglasses on and otherwise it's perfectly obvious that it's chaos that is the person there. So it cuts back over to the Skylanders in court, and it's of course like got a whole jury of Mabu, and all the Skylanders are there, and they're all vouching for Pop Fizz. They're like, you know, listen, he would never do a thing like this. This is just something, this is completely uncharacteristic for Pop Fizz. And so it gets around to it, and Pop Fizz is, is kind of like, you know what? You know what, guys? Really... I can't say that I, I didn't do it because I, I just plain don't remember. So you know what? Fine. I, I guess I did do it. And so he basically admits guilt and gets sentenced to 20 years in Skylands prison. And, and, and that's, not, that's not fun. 20 years is a long time. In light of the fact that Pop Fizz has been sent away to prison, Cloudcracker Prison, um, Sprocket is placed on the team as a temporary replacement. And while all the Skylanders are kind of like, you know, I really just don't think that Pop Fizz is the one that did this. And Sprocket's like, I don't think so either. And I found a little bit of interesting things as I was doing some research. And it looks like the coins don't actually have any kind of fingerprint on them at all. So whoever did this did not use their hands in any way to grab these coins. It, it, it couldn't have been Pop Fizz unless he has a potion to make coins float or something like that. 
And basically, Sprocket thinks that Pop Fizz was framed, and so they're, they set out to try to prove his innocence. They go and they visit Pop Fizz in Cloudcracker Prison, and they talk to him, and they're like, can you really not remember anything about what you were doing? And he was like, well, now that you mention it, I guess what I was doing was I was replacing my beakers when the robberies happened. So it couldn't have been me because I know where I was. I was replacing my beakers. I'm not sure why they went missing, but... I, I know I was replacing them. So they get a call, there are other Skylanders, that another robbery has happened with a very similar profile to what just happened. It's got the same beakers, and there's still no fingerprints on the coins, but they find tiny little balls of green hair, green fur, whatever, and it's revealed that it's not actually fur, but it's felt, not fur. So that's kind of interesting. Who has green hair? felt. The only logical answer is Chompy Mage, and it is revealed that Chompy Mage is the person who has been stealing these coins and basically was trying to frame Pop Fizz by placing his beakers in the banks where he just robbed. He was trying to get away by framing Pop Fizz. Well, looks like they finally caught on to him because they're trying to frame a guy who's in jail and that, well, that's, that's not a good idea. After it's revealed that it is Chompy Mage who is um, stealing, or robbing these banks, they go, they beat him up, and Pop Fizz is released, and all is right with the world for Pop Fizz. Hugo returns to the Skylands uh, Community College and sees the situation that the class has devolved in because of chaos. Because of chaos, the class has devolved into chaos, basically. And so, chaos rips off his disguise, or and they... they Basically, they expel, they expel Glumshanks for being such a horrible teacher, and he has no choice but to go back with Chaos. And so, then it cuts over to Chaos Sandra in her castle, and the eye pair that we saw at the very end of the last episode of Season 1 is revealed to be trying to escape the book that it is trapped in. And apparently, it has gained enough strength that it is able to break out of its book, but it still can't really leave the room that it's in. Chaos Sandra, though, still has enough power to be able to banish it back to the book for now. But it's kind of implied that this threat is growing with each passing day as Chaos Sandra gets weaker and this pair of eyes gets stronger. Whoever this pair of eyes, whatever this pair of eyes is. But I have a feeling that by the end of this season, we're going to figure out who, what, whatever is trapped in that book. And boy, I bet it's going to be a doozy. At the end of the episode, Pop Fizz basically goes through and labels all his potions. It's not terribly important. The real important part is that the pair of eyes is trying to escape. What is trying to escape? What is going on? What's the overall plot? What is going on, guys? I have no idea. Like I said, I've only watched the end of episode 7. But, that is it for episode 7, the plot synopsis of it. Basically, Pop Fizz gets framed by Chompy Mage. It wasn't Pop Fizz. Pop Fizz gets released. A pair of Eyes is trying to escape. Glumshanks gets, gets expelled from Community College and goes with Chaos. That's the really short explanation of what happened in this episode. All right, so I know that a lot of this video was talking about filler episodes. That's kind of why it was a little difficult to actually discuss what was going on. The first couple of episodes where we really got introduced to Cinder and Malifor and sort of what the plot was going to be about throughout the entire season, well, that was really interesting because a lot of that was really advancing the story along. But a lot of these are just filler episodes, and there's not a whole lot of interesting, you know, overall plot things to talk about in these little filler episodes. That's why I decided to put four episodes in today's video. Video, and why the next video that should be coming out next week will also have four episodes but the final uh, but the final episode of this series will contain the final two episodes of Skylanders Academy since it is well important uh, important episodes in the series I know that might be a little confusing but just bear with me we'll get through this together but anyways that is pretty much all I have for you guys today thank you guys so much for watching this episode of my Skylanders Academy season 2 breakdown that's all for now like I said Thanks for watching. This has been Portal Master 9351. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.